Aloha, I'm Melly James, host of Let's Mana Up. This show is meant to dive into stories of local product entrepreneurs and how they are growing their companies from right here in Hawaii. My guest today is Kanoi Lani Davis, founder of Komahina Designs, based on the island of Molokai. Welcome to the show, Kanoi Lani. Mahalo, I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> Great, well, let's uh, start things off with sharing, you know, how did you get started with Komahina Designs? Um, you know, it started off with uh, educating our community, um, my, my hula group, uh, my students, um, wanting for them and yearning for them to learn their culture, remembering the names, um, valuing and honoring the elements. And uh, by doing that, I was able to create designs uh, through my graphic arts background and really allow them to feel the essence of these designs so that they could remember them. Um, and the idea for that was for, so it could be passed on generation to generation and that's basically how it started so so when did it get started like what was going on at the time for you <laughs> um it was in 2000 uh 2009 it started then um we were at that point traveling to different parts of the world and um uh, aside from them trying to remember the names and honoring the elements we needed others to do the same as well and so um i had my halal I taught them how to make um, bamboo stamps, ohe kapala, and um, natural dyes. And it started off with dyeing, um, dyeing little drawstring bags with these images on it. And we would put uh, gifts from Molokai, um, natural gifts, and then that's how we were able to give them away to our guests and um, the people that we met across in different parts of the world. So you really got started on Molokai. Yes. And everything was being made there. Is it, is it still all being made there? Have you really cultivated this network of, of seamstresses and, and people able to help you make a lot of your clothing? It's actually evolved um, a lot. And so when, what it started off being um, myself and, you know, sometimes my daughters and maybe some of my students um, ended up being um, where it was just solely me um, getting the machines and uh, printing and um, heat pressing and sewing. Uh, but the business started to grow. And so at that point, I was able to contract um, local um, seamstresses on the island. And, um, and even that, and it, it, cons it like, consistently yeah. evolved. So then I ended up having to contract outside of the island. And, um, um, and, and it's still growing. Yeah. Uh, but our main, my main goal, you know, I'm hoping in five to ten years, is to have everything made on Moloka. And, uh, creating a space where the economics, um, it fits within those economics of manufacturing. Not only for myself, but hopefully others on Hawaii as well. Yeah, no, that's really inspirational. I know with growth, a lot of times, you know, you can, you can keep it here and then you've got to go off island a little bit and then really try to bring it back and, yeah. and continue to grow the industry. Yeah. So I know we keep talking about what you're doing, but let's, let's actually take a look at some of the amazing clothes. So what are, what are we wearing today? Um, so I think people are just going to get a sneak peek of some of the designs that's going to be on the stage in London, um, in London Pacific Fashion Week. Um, the collection is called Elemental Subconscious. And it's honoring the feminine qualities and the feminine elements of Hawaii. And so uh, this is um, a hint of a piece that will be on the runway. This is a uh, haukea uh, in representation of Poliahu, uh, considering that honoring Mauna Kea um, and all the things that are happening right now in Hawaii. Um, and then I'm wearing uh, uh, Hina. And so uh, the moon phases, um, and not only the things that we can see, but the things that we cannot see too, uh, through its essence. So these are just a, some of those things, and I'll have um, Laka of the forest, and I will also have Pele. Awesome. Yeah. So I know you just mentioned London Fashion Week, and that is one of the themes of the show today, really talking about you're the first Native Hawaiian designer <gasps> yes. to be invited to London Fashion Week. and can you share kind of how that happened? I know there's, are there four major fashion weeks? There are three or four? There's four. So you have New York, uh, Paris, Milan, and London. Okay. And um, not realizing what a prestigious and um, uh, humbling um, experience this is going to be and what that prestige means to fashion in general across the world. And so um, I'm really excited to be um, in London and um, representing Hawaii and um, 
really, really excited about um, closing the show. You're closing well. the show? I'm closing the show. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So can you just share for the audience kind of what London Fashion Week is or like what are these four oh huge fashion weeks and like fashion meccas of the world? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So these are where all your huge um, designers, um, this is where they showcase to the world. And to be invited is um, a big deal. It's not something that, at least in my experience, I'm not quite sure how it is for everybody else. Um, you don't, I, I don't think you go in and sign up and say, hey, can I go to London Fashion Week? Um, to be invited? I was invited and I was very, um, it's still, it's still mind boggling to understand how I was invited considering I'm on Molokai. Right, and not on Oahu or Maui or one of the bigger islands. They must be searching the, the world yeah, very or carefully. Or desperate. No, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, but they, um, yeah, so having to be invited is a big deal. And um, I was invited last year uh, to New York Fashion Week. Um, but due to our people in Hawaii going through the flooding, going through um, the eruptions, um, it was more important for me to focus um, financially to help our people here in Hawaii. Uh, this year, very fortunate again that I got invited by another company to go to London, and so I wanted to take this opportunity to do that. So what does that mean to, um, uh, to fashion? Um, it's the stepping stone to um, the many opportunities that are gonna start coming in. Now you're being seen by the world, and uh, people from all over the world will come to New York, will go to London, will go to Milan, and will go to Paris just to see what's new, just to see what's out there. Mm -hmm. And um, I have to believe that the reason why I was chosen or invited was not only because of the fashion or the design, but, um, but my closeness to our people, our culture, and, um, and I think that's what people are looking for, that, that depth, that um, finding that uh, space where this can intermingle self and fashion. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's a stepping stone to hopefully really great things in the future. And I've seen it happen, and we've seen it happen with many other designers. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I'd love to talk about what's going to happen after London Fashion Week. I have so many questions for you now, but I'm going to cut off for a second okay. and look at some images okay. so we, the audience can see some of your gorgeous clothing and fashion. So we've got, what do we have here? Okay, so as you can see, it's the same design that um, Meli is wearing right now, um, Haukea um, from the Poliahu line. Um, and um, this is a take on um, that lightness, that airiness of that chiffon and that flutter that you see when the snow graces the, the tops of Mauna Kea and um, the fluidity and how that moves. So, um, and I have lei, uh, feather lei, lei hulu, uh, which will be uh, graced upon the the heads of um, each feminine element, um, main, uh, uh, um, main model um, as they walk down the stage. So really bringing in not only uh, the contemporary aspects of it, but some of our uh, more recent traditions of lehulu making. Beautiful. Okay, next image. There's you. Oh, that's, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> so um, these are some of the new pieces that came out this year. Um, coral was the color of the year, and it, it embraced coral blues and pinks and greens. And so I always like to say that it's, a, um, it's an expression of our reefs um, and climate change, uh, which is the theme of this year's London Fashion Week, uh, Pacific Fashion Week. And so, yeah, I'm here on Molokai. Um, you know, uh, we don't have big buildings and we don't have um, beautiful parks, but we have beautiful mountains and sceneries and uh, things that we hold uh, very close and dear to us. So um, in this image, I'm wearing our new one piece um, off the shoulder top um, and our, our clutch and um, heels. So we'll see more heels and boots and a lot of new pieces on the runway in London. Next image. Uh, many know if, uh, who've been following Pomahina Designs, uh, we do have swimwear. And um, these are just some of the pieces that I have from the Kanaloa Ahina collection. Um, and also leggings and leisure wear. Uh, I put that leggings with the swimsuit because um, they dry fast, they're, uh, they're versatile, and um, we love taking them in the ocean and taking them in the mountains aside from just working out. 
Good for paddling, too. Good for pa perfect for paddling. Yeah. yeah. Your leg doesn't rub against the side no. of the canoe. <laughs> So what's going to happen after Fashion Week? Like, what is this, you know, what are you doing differently at the show? Why are you closing? And I know, um, you know, it's, it's a big deal. So what are some of the inspirations you have to just really make a big bang at, at the show? You know, I feel like, I honestly feel um, Homahina has a bigger purpose than fashion. Um, this is allowing the voices of Molokai. This is allowing the voices of Hawaii uh, be heard. And... Um, and also the way we are looked at um, from the entire world. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, really taking away the stigma of um, you know, grass skirts and flower lays and plastic lays and you know, big flower, um, you know, aloha wear. And so um, to really redefine who we are as a people to the world in our depth, in our culture, uh, through heritage and through genealogy. And um, honestly, I hope that this opens doors to um, expanding Pomahina, evolving in a way that it can grow um, uh, both in the fashion industry, but also um, in a way that we can have these conversations more mm -hmm. often. Um, That's really important. I think you touched on that earlier. How did they find you and what was different? And so much of your voice is through social media. I'm always so impressed every day where I don't know how you do it, but it is so warm and so from the heart um, and really kind of touches something mm. uh, multiple times a day. And I'm just like, where does this come from? Like, how did you, where, where does this come from? Me, it's all yeah. me. It's, it's uh, uh, and not in that uh, type of way, but more of, um, well, first off on Molokai, um, many, I'm recognizing that in itself is, there's not many people who understand the resources on our island. You know, we're 10, we're 10 miles wide, we're 32 miles long. We don't have malls, we don't have um, uh, franchises, you know, nothing over three stories. We don't even have street lights. So um, as a person from Molokai, we've always been resourceful. Um, and so social media and e-commerce has been my go-to. I can't create spaces that people, we can bring people to the island, but I can create spaces that we can leave the island virtually and so social media has been played a big part in that and i believe that's how um the london uh, pacific fashion week um through um anna and even oxford fashion who invited me to new york um fashion week that's how they found me mm -hmm. and um aside from just the fashion that i put up every day um, i do try to do oh, and i always tell people um that's me going through the, some things or seeing things in a different light and then just being able to share that. And the, uh, the most awesome part about that is those who come back, they're like, thank you. I'm going through that. That got me through my day. And I'm like, no, thank you, because that got me through my day. And this is all, you know, and it's just really helping each other out. Yeah, building to together. Elevate. Yeah, yeah, it's nobody superior to anybody and nobody's better than anybody. It's just like, you know, to keep that as real as possible. Um, is uh, creates a very vulnerable space, um, but it also creates a, a, a great space to grow, uh, both personally and through Pomohino. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think, you know, that is something that has been growing over the past few years, that authenticity and just being able to be more open and everything's not just all good all the time. Yeah. And when you can allow people to come in a little bit, it just makes that more of a stronger brand and more of a stronger connection to you. Mm -hmm. But I really like what you were talking about with technology. And so that is really leveling the playing field for a lot of our local Hawaii companies where you've got e-commerce, you've got um, social media, you have all these channels that we never had before. And you're right, we can't suddenly do a, a shop in the middle of Molokai. People are, you know, can't fly over. It's right. difficult as it is. But can you share a little bit more on how you've leveraged technology? I know you've done a lot of these really neat kind of Facebook events and some of those ways you've been able to get the word out and really produce sales. Yeah, um, it all started off with Facebook, obviously, and Facebook Lives. And at one point, I wanted to be like the QVC of Hawaii. Um, and then I wanted to be, um, you know, the Oprah of Hawaii. Like, I just wanted to, like, be able to get out. And that was um, the most, you know, I would be in, in, in friends' stores in the middle of Kanakakai Town. And I'm like, can I use your place as a background? And, you know, we'll draw people in for your store. And then I get to be on this and have a nice background. and. Um, uh, really collaborating, really um, uh, 
working with everybody and not feeling like I had to do everything by myself. And so uh, the, the, the tech part was really difficult because we are very limited in our um, services on Molokai, as well as even Wi-Fi um, is some, in some places very hard to get. Uh, but you make do and you find those spots and then you just, you know, send great mana and energy into these spots so that you can keep doing the things that you do. But um, I, I feel like the e-commerce, uh, the, um, the lives and all mm -hmm. that, uh, it really works. Yeah, I mean, yeah. clearly it worked. You yeah. know, they've gotten a huge following. How many followers do you have on your Instagram? I think I have over 12,000, almost, yeah, 12,000. Yeah, and, yeah, and just all the imagery is yeah. so incredible. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna take a break now, okay. but thanks Kunailani okay. with Pomahina Designs. We'll be back in a little bit. Okay. Mahalo. <laughs> thanks to our ThinkTech underwriters and grantors, the Atherton Family Foundation, Carol Monley and the Friends of ThinkTech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, Dwayne Carisu, the Hawaii Community Foundation, the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. Aloha, I'm Melly James with Let's Mana Up, and we're back here with Kanoilani Davis from Pomahina Designs. Welcome back. Hello. <laughs> I think I'd love to just jump into some more of your gorgeous uh, designs. So we'll we'll go back. We'll go to the image with the with the kids. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So what's going on here? Uh, um, so our models on Molokai are limited. So we're calling out all models who want to come. This is actually so my <laughs> youngest daughter, and um, just showcasing um, swimwear for kids as well as um, leggings uh, for kids as well. So. Um, Again, just the versatility of these pieces and, um, you know, it's gorgeous it's for everybody. Yeah. Love it. Okay. Yeah. Next image, please. Oh, this is recent. Um, this was in uh, the New Zealand Embassy in wa uh, Washington, D.C. with um, A Ala A Cultural Center. Uh, they did a Hawaii fashion walk. And um, wow, who was invited yeah. to that? Uh, myself as the main. Um, fashion um, on the runway, as well as Native Americans, or a Native American speaker, um, Wesley May, and a uh, Maori wow, speaker. That's really yeah, incredible. Yeah. So you're going from DC now to London for yeah, London Fashion Week. Yeah, yeah. Right. Really getting Hawaii out to the world. It is, and I think more people are drawn to, um, to culture in this, in this way, in this fashion, so to speak. Um, and people are uh, wanting to know the stories and wanting to know, um, especially with women, Native women. The why. Yeah, the why and, and how and, um, you know, what's the drive, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, let's look at some more gorgeous images. <laughs> Ooh, I like this. Oh, this is another um, Molokai um, Kane man. Uh, this is Bula Kamakana. And, um, I actually met him. Did you? Yeah, he drove me around the island. When we were oh, there to yes. visit you. Yes, yes. You, I remember that. Um, so Bula is, um, he's so gracious to um, uh, take photos. We have Aloha shirts. Um, I will reveal that in this year's collection, we will have long sleeve Aloha shirts. It's been something that um, the men have been asking for for a very long time. Um, so uh, that will be revealed. Um, you get to see the new designs on the long sleeves. But I feel like for women, we just have so many things we get to pick from. So the, the guys are always like, Please, have nothing. we need more designs because yeah. all they can pick from are like Aloha shirts. Right, right. right. Yeah, it's funny how they ask for certain um, certain pieces and not even re realizing men are just as picky as women. And, you know, can you do this? And can you put this here? And can you think about this? And it's like, okay, 
taking those things into consideration. It may not happen overnight or within that year, but it definitely stays with me as I grow. Yeah. And you do a little bit of custom stuff too once in a while. I do. Like, for like um, paddling teams and stuff like that, so bigger orders. Yeah, yeah. I do. Um, um, we like to put honoring the teams and putting their names um, on their club names on their um, their leggings or whatever pieces they want and um, trying to customize it to their colors, their their theme, um, and really having people be able to have a variety of things to choose from, mm -hmm. but personalize it to themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So I know you have some collaborations here you wanted to talk about. Would you I want to share? Do. I'm really excited. So um, in London, um, we will have some Lao Hala pieces, some woven pieces, and uh, my good friend, P.E. Ali'i, Hawaii, um, he made, I asked him if he could make a ka'e, which is which are these belts that will grace um, uh, the tops and the uh, waistlines of some of my models, as well as um, chokers, um, chokers for um, people to use um, um, on their necks, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I'm really excited to uh, bring him up there with me in this form. And when I get back from London, we will be doing a Pacific Hawaii fashion show. Um, Where will that be? At a Kapiolani Hotel wow. on September 27th. And uh, we will be doing Mamo wearable art show in um, Maui in October and um, Oahu at the Hawaii Convention Center in in November, and then I will be showcasing another good friend of mine and her artwork, um, and her husband. They do um, hui lawahos, which is the hair picks, and um, wooden pieces that uh, will be um, jewelry wow. for the models. Well, let's take a look at one of your fashion shows from the past. Okay. I'm gonna get some video on that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's this is Mamo um, wearable art show. Um, when was this last year? This was actually a, two years ago. Um, this was uh, one of the things that I tried to put on the runway first and foremost is uh, more of more traditional wear, uh, the malo, um, the kikepa, uh, the women pieces, um, really honoring our culture first and foremost before we get into more contemporary and modern pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, I know we kind of jump into next areas of the fashion show some like kind of more trending things that are a little bit more modern yeah you went from there yeah yeah um, interesting enough um, when uh, I was invited by London Pacific Fashion Week they actually I kind of asked them I'm like okay are you looking for more artsy more couture more you know what kind of pieces are you looking for I was so happy to hear that they said we just want you for you and just come with what you have. Um, some of the pieces that excite them are um, the leggings, the leisure wear, the leggings, the sports wear, um, even our shoes. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess that's something that's not seen all over, um, not yet, um, uh, through fashion. Yeah. So. Well, I'd love to hear more of the mo'olelo and the stories behind the, and the, the prints with some of the other images that we have, just to kind of share what you were talking about earlier about the why and why it's so important to, yes. to, to connect. Through these designs. Yeah. Um, oh, this is a very interesting. This was done again here at um, the New Zealand Embassy in Washington D.C. Uh, with our uh, new pieces. Uh, we have again the coral greens, the pinks, and the blues. Uh, this one is the palapalai, um, honoring the forest. And um, they, you know, one of the biggest things is elements doesn't necessarily have to be rain. Uh, winds um, and clouds, you know, they are, we are also uh, connected to uh, particular plants and um, uh, even stones um, in our land. And so the Palapalai was featured here uh, with the new, new colors. And at the end of the show, uh, I, I do support uh, Mauna Kea and um, uh, keeping our sacred places sacred and so um, it was really nice to be able to stand next to our models and um, do pukia i mauna. <laughs> yeah, really powerful. Yeah. Okay, yeah. what's the next image? Again, palapalai. So you can see the same design just being put in so many different um, pieces of clothing and that's one thing I really um, take pride in through Pomahina Designs is uh, you can get any design on any type of 
um, accessory or clothing that I have. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, this is another new piece. Um, uh, it's a hoodie dress and so comfortable. And I did it for our young, you know, when the kids go to school and their teachers say, wear an aloha dress. And they're like, we don't want to wear a mu'u mu'u. And I'm like, who says that's aloha dress, like an aloha wear? Like, you can wear these kinds of things too. It's um, how you express yourself, I believe, um, how you stand, how you share mm -hmm. that breath with somebody else. Else, that's aloha. So, yeah. So, so many of your patterns, you guys, you were mentioning, can be on any piece that you've designed. What have been some of like the biggest challenges that you've had? You know, not only are you doing business in Hawaii, you're doing business on the island of Molokai. Um, I know you went through Mana Ups Cohort Two. Yes. Um, so, you know, what kinds of challenges have you have you encountered, and, and how have you kind of overcome them? Yeah. Um, Actually, to be honest, um, technology is a big thing, right? Um, if my machine breaks down, I have nobody to come and service them. That's like, so you gotta like, you gotta be resourceful, innovative. You gotta know where to go and figure things out on your own. So that's probably the biggest challenge. Um, aside from that is the networking and meeting people for that growth. Um, so I'm really appreciative of uh, Mana Up and being part of and the cohort too, because um, through Mana Up, I was able to, um, learn about more about taxes, learn about importing, learn about exporting, you know, um, being able to meet uh, people who are in the in, in the industry, um, uh, whether they th what it whether it's through um, uh, PR or through manufacturing or through different stores and outlets. Um, yeah, Mana Up has really created a space for me to grow in that manner and to meet other people and um, something that I could never do from Molokai. Um, and to reach out, you know, you know, hey, look at me. It's not like that. It's I feel weird doing that. Yeah. So it was great to have these classes um, and to be put in this space. We love having you. Yeah. So I know we're about to wrap up. Okay. Uh, and you've got London Fashion Week coming. When is that? And how can our local community support you? Um, so uh, London Fashion Week is September 13th. We, we will be showcased at 8, 8 p.m. Um, in London, which I believe is... 12 hours ahead. So I think it's 8 a.m. here in Hawaii. Um, KHON2 Live um, has the exclusive on that. So I hope that people tune in and watch that. And at the end of the show, we will be singing Kuha Aheo. And I'm really hoping that we all, um, from wherever we're at, sing, I hope you guys join me in singing, singing Kuha Aheo. And, um, but for more information, we will keep updating our Instagram, which is Pomahina Designs, um, as well as our Facebook, Pomahina Designs. Amazing. Well, I'm just so proud of you. And just I can't wait to see what happens with Pomahina Designs mm -hmm. after London Fashion Week. I know you said, you know, people come there from all over the world to mm -hmm. see what's what's happening next and really seeing how Hawaii really is at the center point for yes. so much of fashion these days. Mm -hmm. um, just just really excited for you and and, and excited to see what's going to happen next. So yeah. be sure to check you out at Pomahina Designs. Mm -hmm. And what does Pomahina mean? Pomahina is the, the, the moon that shines so brightly. It's the one thing that everybody in the world can see. Even in darkness, there's that little bit of light. Right. Well, thanks, Kanoilani, yeah. uh, with Pomahina Designs Mahalo. for joining us today. Mahalo, Meli. <laughs>